morning, one and all, and howdy. This is Everlove and Ira Fosberg coming to you over KYOL 1000 Watts of Power at Benteen Entertain and All of Schuler County. Well, it's a beautiful morning in the big sky country, the first day of autumn, September 22nd. And remember, 1934 is a very good year. Slogan courtesy of the Benteen Sons of the Open Range, who will hold their weekly meeting at the Grange Hall this Friday night. Once I built a railroad, I made it run high. Once I built a railroad, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? Once I built a tower... Fire's coming. Major heart lines by the looks of it. Elroy, what can I do for you? Nothing. Major told me to deliver this. I tried to get out of bringing it. Take a meal with us? No thanks, Shasta. That's so how you feel that way, Elroy. Looks like an invite. Hmm. Elroy Bones is still dead against us. Major Roland Hartline requests the pleasure of your company, dinner and dancing, Sunday evening. You didn't mention a million there? You know the Major's rules. No Indians, Mexicans, or college graduates allowed. Well, I call it strange. I wonder what he wants. Maybe he wants to make peace. You better go and find out. You got something to wear? You'll see. You know what to do with these things? I'll bet she knows. Colonel Dahlgren, honored guests and friends. This can be, and with God's help will be, America's century. Our country, despite a temporary spell of economic depression and an upsurge in cynicism and debunking, will weather the moral and spiritual crisis. I rise to declare my faith in the future, our future of consolidation, cooperation, and recovery, and to ask your help and sacrifice in making us strong and great once again. I offer a toast to tradition, to the heritage I serve and the values we share and that bind us together. I call upon that great spirit of adventure which carried us to victory in foreign wars and the individual enterprise which has made our great western desert bloom like the rose. For above all, America is a promise. Toast with me then, America. America, the beautiful. Mrs. Shasta, I'm Ann Klinger, Major Hartline's guest for the weekend, and I have heard that you actually help your husband run your little ranch. I mean, you know, running the cattle and all, and delivering your baby cattle. The strongest must hold the sweet Shasta? Major, Major, uh, I'm curious. Why'd you invite us here? Enjoy your drinks. That lady wouldn't stop talking. Paid for your dinner around here one way or the other. I was just asking the old guy why we... Mr. Shasta, I think you're escorting the most beautiful woman at the ball. Can a beat-up old cameraman steal a dance? Sure. Sure, I'll uh, keep watching. In case I get the hang of it, I'll cut in. Never 
fly is just a bowl of cherries. So live and laugh at it all. You should put on a party dress more than once a year, Mrs. Shasta. Seems a pure waste to make a cow hand out of it. Why? It's no shame for a woman to work. As the school teacher, maybe, but you deserve a lot more than living poor and making do. You don't understand, Major. I love my husband. I enjoy my life. sociability fool you. I want to talk business. Go ahead. My people have had the oak leaf since the 70s. It's a long time. We've held out against blizzards, droughts, thieves, screwworm, cattle companies, feeder lots, and bank panics. Kept our own and taken care of our own. The oak leaf stands for something. So does the triple S. Stands for us. You're a fair enough cattleman, Shasta, but these days you can't make it without capital. Money. I'll give you a bonus. Five percent. No, I guess I can make it seven and a half percent of the profits. What profits, Midget? You're gonna have trouble selling off that scraggly herd you got. You'll never see an offer like this again. I'm giving you a chance for once to ride with the winner. Major, I work for myself. They're ungrateful. For what? Now listen, no half-breed married to a white woman would have been better off married to her own kind. He's gonna get rich off me. You'll scrounge. I'll see to it. I've got a place in this country. And I'll put you in it. I hope it doesn't come to that, Major. Thanks for the invite. Excuse us, please. Awfully quiet. You want to dance? <laughs> you had a fight with Hartline. Nah, it wasn't much of a fight. He offered me a job, actually. You gonna take it? No. Can you imagine me as somebody else's foreman in 20 years? He must figure I'm a pretty good old boy for a half-breed, though. <laughs> he knows how good you really are. Oh, he's running his place into the dirt, and I guess he just needs somebody to bail him out. The words were choking him. Glad you said no. On the other hand, I took his wages for years, and maybe I owe him some. You don't owe him anything. For making something special for us. He'd never understand.
wasn't so bad for a girl. I was doing all right. Prickly, ain't you? Julian brought in? Yeah. They ought to be worth ten, eleven dollars to us. Well, I sure hate to disappoint you, Julian, especially after all that prod rope and you did, however. I'm gonna have to take him back. You mean I caught him for the exercise? Those rules were made a long time ago. We're entitled to him. Hartline's fences have been down since last winter. Hartline's a careless man, but we're gonna abide by the rules. Major. Wasted a half day bringing them to you. I'm glad you recognize the courtesy of the range. Could do more to deserve it. Now mind your manners. I can still help you or bury you. No, you can't. I raised better beef. It's my whole life. Why did you turn me down, Shasta? To be your own man? This country is lettered with small men, rugged individuals, American dreamers, immigrants. You give them a lot of dangerous ideas. Major, I ain't got my eyes set for nothing that's yours. I just want to carve out a piece for myself. <laughs> you learn your lesson. My roundup camp's down the road. Collect your strays, Nate. All right. Ken? What you got for me? Nothing. Nothing? Well, now, that'd be a first in ranching neighbors, wouldn't it? Fences down all around, and none of my beef came over and got on your spread. Mind if I look over your stock? We mind. The honest way of doing business. Major Hardline says we haven't got a one. You're the foreman. That's the way you're going to play it, honey. Huh, Bad times. Showing you up for what you are. Yes, Brand, wouldn't you agree? Oh, I made a mistake. Now get out of here while I'm still holding on to my temper. Tomorrow you go for the truck. Okay, tomorrow you go for the truck. Whenever you're worried, you get bossy and talk tough. Well, I'm not going to go for the truck. What do you think about that? I've been cowboying alongside you all month, every day. Well, if times were better, we'd go get a chauffeur and he'd get the truck. I suppose you'd like me to play auction bridge with the ladies in Ben T. Yeah. What are you afraid of? I see, we don't have enough of a herd. That's a fact. We don't have much of a herd. Or is it that you don't want Hartline's men to see me working? Well, 
Are you ever sorry about us? Luke Shasta. I had to run you down like that steer. The one you wouldn't let me keep. Well, Shasta, how are you? Tired. Mighty good-looking stock. Prime. You know, I used to be a rancher one time. I saw the business change. All for the worse. Big corporations are going to have it all someday. Might just as well. Can't use much what Heartline's trying to sell. Well, you know now, this isn't your eight-cent beef. Used to get 50, 55 dollars a head for this kind of beef. Yeah, only yesterday. Could take them over to the auction at Ashland. That's a good market. Raises by hand. It'd be a shame to walk the flesh off of him. I'm offering 15 ahead. The way I figure it, I got 17 apiece, I know. That means I'd be losing $2 a head. <laughs> Lose a little on each one, make up for it in volume. That's the best I've offered all season. I guess not. Shasta. That's prime beef. Add two bits of head. Why am I a banker? That's Hodges over in Benteen. That's right. You're a hard man to do business with. Not hard enough. How'd we do? Best we could. Just about broke. Maybe we should have raised less cattle and a little more hell. Just pretend you're a Kansas City millionaire, Moon. Yeah, well. You want me to gather up the rest of the live bunch tomorrow? Yeah. I think we ought to handle the brood cows, too, don't you? Yeah, we better do that, I guess. <laughs> I wish we could afford a radio. Yeah, well. I wish we could afford a good Indian. I love being with you. I love our place. Hey, we're getting by. That's succeeding. Well, at least you're not a stuffed shirt like Hardline, pretending to be a cattle baron. <clears throat> Why don't you stop trying to conquer the world?
wrong with my driving? Nothing. Looks like you're doing more thinking than driving. Do you know anything about women? Nope. You ever make one happy? Yeah, they told me they were at the time. I... No. What do they want? I don't know. It could be a bullet hole, you know. Maybe a warning. That thread's as shot as your underpants. <laughs> Are you trying to be a white man? I ain't trying to be a white man. What do you want, then? Well, I guess I want the same as everybody else. Want to love my woman? Raise some kids? Get by? Ain't afraid to work hard? Huh? Well, don't get too happy, too prosperous. Why do you say that? Your God won't like it. Your God is money, Moon. Your God is money. Yeah, maybe so, but you better walk soft. It's another man's sky. all the way up from Elko. Howdy. They're very good. Skillful, I'll bet. We don't see you anymore. Got married. I heard. One woman man wants to find a woman. Well, one at a time. <laughs> but then we get all the married guys sooner or later. Mighty sweet temptation there, Jenny. But I don't think so. Maybe you, you must be in love with just plain lost interest. Got other things on my mind these days, Moon. Got business on my mind. Besides that, I don't seem to have much to work with anymore. Yeah, I was staying away from Jenny Tall, but it won't get you in the Chamber of Commerce. Hadn't figured on it. Don't get suckered in there, Mr. Businessman. You bet. Well, now, Major, it's not like the old days when your daddy was deciding things. Yes, sir, I know you still own stock in this bank, but since we merged... Operating expenses. Yes, I know. Well, I already spoke to Denver, and they said you were not to be given an extension without more collateral. Now, Mr. Evans made a particular point about the collateral. Nature of the electric bond and share closed at one and a quarter yesterday. You've got to sell cattle. Lots of cattle, Major. But well, I feel just as bad about this as anything, but... It's good to see an old friend, Jackson. Come on in, sit down. Thank you. Uh, Can I go get in touch with you? Yes, sir. Sale has been confirmed, all written up. If you'll just sign here and here to make it official, it's standard. I understand the paperwork. Thank you. Of course, we don't have it as bad as some. Down south, the land is just blowing away. You see that in the newsreel? No, I haven't been to a picture show in quite a while. Things are definitely looking up. Now, your triple S is a tight operation. Now, I have it on good authority that President Roosevelt is thinking of extending the subsidy program. You're sure to qualify. Now, production control is the answer. Keep you cattlemen from cutting each other's throats. Well, it doesn't appeal to me to have somebody pay me not to raise cattle. Well, you uh, made your mortgage payment this quarter. Then we have uh, finance charges, transportation costs, underwriting, and so on, sort of carry the deal. Looks like the interest charges kind of ate you up. 
This is what I got for six months' work? Man in a vest telling me I have $244 to last over the winter with? Well, it's like I said, the interest charges kind of ate you up. But once we get price supports... Give me the money. I'll open an account for you. Looking out for Heartline? If I had any money, money worth buying anything with, I swear I'd bury it before I gave it to you. Now, that's not fair. These hard times, we've all lost everything. I never had it. Shasta, you want to get along, go along. That's the American way. You bet. Chop it up three ways ain't very much. We got suckered pretty good in there, Moon. Well, money's like a cup of sugar anyway. Everybody wants his finger and dips it into it. What are you gonna do? Get drunk. Go to Jimmy Thomas. Okay. I know. I'm more of the government. They gotta take care of me by treaty. Besides, cattle business is just the pastime with me anyway. You're welcome to stay on, you know. Hey, look, you think I'm flapjack soft? I've been to a thousand places, left them all smiling. Hey, you worry too much. This is all just a bad dream. Besides, you can't divide three into 244 and come out even. Right you are. Drink up the difference, Moon. Have a good time with Jenny Tyrus. It's so long. Here, Shasta, I'll play storekeeper for you myself to show you there's no hard feelings. Won't be buying much today. Thanks, Major. I guess I can give an old hand in advance. Uh, you need credit? I'll pay cash. If you want some gas, I'll uh, unlock the pump. No, thanks. It's, uh, 24 cents you overcharged me, Major. I just put the price up. Call that fair? I call that power. You've got $244 to last you over the winter. Less whatever you gave that Indian. Good news travels fast. Your electric bond and share is worth a buck and a quarter. You got any buyers? I'd better remind you who runs things. What do you want? You want my ranch? I'm the man you'll deal with. Now or later. Or is it something else altogether? I want everything you've got, Shasta. Overcharge me another 50 cents. I just put that price up to. Is that all you're buying? Major, you don't own me yet. Now, I might have to skin it or grow it or just go hungry. But I ain't gonna shop here no more. You got a stiff neck, Shasta. Watch where you step. Land of the free. Huh? And the home of the brave. Hey, La. Didn't expect to see you till spring. Well, I decided to settle on a short beer. Hey, would you like to bring up the difference? You bet. Prohibition ruined the liquor trade. Business is lousy, all right. Well, Shasta, how's your wife take the range work? Just fine. She likes the life. Times I was gathering cattle, I felt like I could drink the whole Green River dry. You bet. 
two Green River whiskeys, doubles, beer chasers. I just bet she likes it. <laughs> Living in a shack, eating them refried beans. <laughs> DJ, how long have I been drinking here? Since the war, I guess. First time you ever gave me anything in an Indian glass. I suppose it is. Didn't ask for special treatment. It's him. I shouldn't be serving you at all, really. Some of the boys, you know. No, I don't know. I'm an Indian myself. Forget. Just forget it happened. I'd like to have two Green River whiskeys, doubles, beer chasers. Isn't this place good enough for you, Shasta? Always has been, Nate. Well, first you cost us money by taking away Oak Leaf cattle sales. And then you interfere with our drinking. I say you're a pain. Anybody else want a taste? Elroy Bones. Yeah? Stand up. How long have you known me? Fifteen years off and on. You ever known me to shirk? You always did your share. You ever known me to lie, cheat, welch on a bet? Nope. I ever double-cross you or anybody you know? Nope. Then why are you bull-ragging me? <laughs> the feeling around here... Just don't favor independence. I was plenty good enough when I worked for Heartline. Now I bring you your strays and you don't even offer me a cup of coffee. Chance, it was different when you was one of the hands along with us before you went and quit off. That's what you want to be all your life, Elroy. A hand? Got a family to worry about. You own anything? Nope. Neither do I. gonna do it their way, Moon. Walking into hard line, Sheriff. You need a keeper. Just cover my flank. Sheriff. What am I to do for you boys? Nate Rackley just jumped me over at the Oak Leaf. Hardline's foreman? That's right. Hardline got him to chows me. Well, I guess I better go talk to him. Look, Sheriff, I just came here to tell you my side of it. You stay here. yourself a packet or a stutz. What's this mean? Stan? I'd better. You're in trouble with the boss. Anyway, I like your horses. You shouldn't throw off those drugstore cowboys and the sheriff. Well, I got redneck moon. Made those gringos feel inferior. Man serves you up a bowl of dirt, you don't have to eat it. Man has to eat a peg of it during his time in this world. We followed the rules. Now, that was what was important. But the game was fixed. We didn't even get our drinks. Right, you are. Can you stay on a bronc at all? 
Well, I suppose better than some. Worse than a whole lot. I figure the rodeo soon. You might win some money. I wouldn't bet a nickel on it. He'll keep it triple S a lot till spring. The Indian way. For the good news? That's it. That's what I paid for groceries. Wound share is in there. He's staying. You just gonna count it? Something happened in town. What makes you say so? Because you haven't had anything to drink. Just a small beef with Nate Rackers. Why? They who rod us treated us like a couple of tramps. You know how things work around here. Heartline School Board invented a reason to fire me when I married you. Needs a cleaning. Haven't used one of those things since the whip cost you. The Wild West. Garden shoot. The man Shasta here is going to win us a lot of money at the rodeo. Come on, Moon, sit down. Oh, no, no. It's not going to hurt. Oh, well, it sure ain't going to help anything, is it? Look, if you two are going to rodeo, I don't want you both looking like a couple of wild Indians. Well, it's better than Samson and Delilah. Don't laugh at me. I didn't ask you to look like no dude. Still. How's it look? Take a little bit more off the ears, and I'll make sure he hears a whistle. I don't want nothing else. All, look, you got it all over the floor. Still, I'll cut your ear off. Damn, how did I wind up with you two for partners anyhow? <laughs> We'd draw our time if there was any for us to draw. Samson is getting soft or something. You ain't go to Jenny Tarver's with me anymore. Our 1934 Benzine Rodeo will be underway in just a moment, but first of all, may I present our official Grand Marshal, Colonel Dahlgren. As your Grand Marshal, I am pleased to declare this 26th annual Benteen Rodeo officially open. May the best man win! Now we're all set to move to the arena for our first rodeo action of the afternoon, and it's cap roping. Luke Shasta of Easy Valley, our first cap roper. for Luke Shasta of Easy Valley. Our next cap roper will be Nate Rackley of the Oak Leaf Ranch, and you know Nate will be riding hard because he has that time of 13 8 to be rides his cap rope to Luke. He does not connect, so he will get no time in the cap roping event here today. And the cowboy coming out of shoot number three is Walt Greeley, representing the Oak Leaf. They have drawn for him here today the long sunny jam. How about a big hand for Walt Greeley of the Oak Leaf Branch? We move now to shoot number four, and our cowboy also hails from the Oak Leaf Branch. He is the foreman there, Nate Rackley, and he has drawn one of the tough horses here this afternoon, and we'll see if he can make the first qualified ride. Nate nods his head and calls for the gate. Here's one of the top combinations of the afternoon, the good horse, PCQ and Nate Rackley. And the cowboy is in a storm. He reaches for the swells. He is kicking himself free and comes to the ground. The cowboy knows it's time to bail out. Tough luck for Nate Rackley as he fails to qualify in the second. 
battle bomb by his kid. Good chance there. Next cowboy eases over the top of shoot number three onto the storm deck of the horse. Brown bomber. Here's the cowboy that is already placed with one hand. He's down to him. And it looks like he's marked his horse out well. He goes to the spring motion from the shoulders back to the cattle board. If he can get to the whistle, he will make our first qualified ride of the afternoon. He does. The judges marked his scorecards, and Luke Shaft is really showing us something here today. You'll be in contention for the all-around champion cowboy. All right, listen. I'm mm -hmm. sorry about what happened at the bar. Yeah, well, you make it sound like we're just doing it for the money. Well, some of us ain't. We move back to the shoots now for more action with one of the biggest cowboys this event, Bonnie Dellinger of Willow Canyon. He's aboard the horse they call Judges. Let's see, marks his horse out in good fashion. The cowboy is getting a good ride on the little sorrel horse. Wait a minute, he's hung up, he's in the stirrup, the horse is on top of him. The cowboy sees he can help him out. They move in to take the horse away, and it looks like Monty is free from the horse. Is he all right? Well, there's the worst wreck of the afternoon. Monty Dellinger of Willow Canyon. Now the action is in the bulldog. He needs now. Good turn deserves another as Marty Rogers goes into the lead in this event. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. In addition to the purse of $25 and the beautiful engraved trophy that will be presented to our all-around champion cowboy at the end of today by the Benteen JCs, I'm pleased to announce a matching amount has just been donated by Major Roland Hartline. This gives us a grand prize total of $50 in cash to the all-around champion cowboy. Here's Jim Burke back behind the barrier in the dogging shoot now, and he'll be coming out in a hurry because he has Marty Rogers' top tie to shoot at. Rides down to his steer, reaches out, his feet behind him, and he's not able to hang on to his steer, so none of the prize money will be going to Tim this afternoon. I'm sorry. What do you think of it? Unless the judges are dead, drunk, or blind. Speak to your gods, Moon. We sure could use that money. Sure haven't been much of a change in hands lately, like that's for sure. Thank you, Ray. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to announce the winner is none other than the Easy Valley Cowboy from the Triple S Ranch, Luke Shasta. a rodeo for this afternoon. We thank you for being... Ladies and gentlemen, a special announcement to top off our day. If the winner should agree, I propose a challenge event, man to man. Alvin Fuster, representing Oakley, against your best, Luke Shasta. He's done riding us yet. Bull riding, on stock, fresh from the range. No time limit, no judges. Ride until the man is thrown, or the creature quits, or a purse of one hundred dollars. Thank you, devil, one more time. Mm. Go for it. 
I ain't never been on no I'd range, like bull. All right. What do you say, Luke Shasta? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, Luke Shasta has accepted the right, challenge. Here. We didn't help this back was there not and shoot you back, but what a great way to culminate our rodeo here this afternoon. Gentlemen, if the contestants would please come forward, our Grand Marshal will draw your stock. Keep in mind, this is a match ride to the finish on bulls right off the range that have never been ridden. And the added purse is $100, compliments of Major Roland Hartline. What did you say your first name was? John George Fister, Ennis, Montana. Say, your partner's a tough rodeo hand, all right. You'll do. George Fister, Ennis, Montana. Hmm, Lenny. It's a real pleasure, honey. You know, we was just passing through, my brother and I, Alvin, and, well, we was trying to pick up on a little winnings. You know how it is, hard times and all, but we got here too dead gun late to qualify. So the major, he's going to give us a chance to do again. It's nice. Now, Lonnie, I know you're not one to brag, but I figured you might want to put a little something on your man. He's part ending. The best part. About 50. 50 dollars on the purse? You got it. Lonnie? I uh, say 200 more. Alone, how do I know you're good for it? You don't. You know who I am and where I live. Fuster, uh, I'd like a little of that third. What's your first name, Jim? Well, we're just about ready to go with our first contestant in our match challenge ride. It's Luke Shasta getting ready at shoot number three on a bull they call the Red Tornado. You get some money down? All of it. There's some buck named Fuster. Something like that. All of it? Yeah. Our wintering money? Hey, the Indian way I trust you. Well, I'll tell you, if I come down off of this here bull, I don't want to hear no boo-hooing out of you. The bull, the people are expecting you. It's not polite to keep them All right, sit it up, take it. Our last ride is Luke Shasta. Crawls over the top of shoe number three, sticks his hand down in a handhold on his bull rope. He'll pull it up tight around the middle of the bull, take a couple of wraps around his hand, and we will reach our moment of truth. Luke is just set to go. Nods his head, calls for the game. And here we go. Red Tornado and Luke Shasta. Ten seconds, ladies and gentlemen, and Luke is still going strong, setting right up in the middle of Red Tornado. Can he get all the way to the finish on this bull? We will see in a moment. Luke Shasta, our cowboy from Easy Valley. He is still aboard. The cowboy crowd move in to help him out. And it looks like he is going to undo his round and step off. Shaft is really going to put the pressure this on the This son them first collects yeah i know what those fuses are thinking i know where they're going turn this car around let's get back only medicine men can read minds guys could be halfway to Canada by now. You got a better idea? Nope. 
It's gone. This is the famous Jenny Tarver's. Wait a minute. Can I get a hand in this outfit? You're not coming in here. You've been coming here for years. Gillian. Shut your eyes, too. Hang on to that. in my boot. <sighs> Mister, that's all the money we got in the world. Get yourself a job. You know there ain't no jobs. Here's a steak. How'd you figure these guys are going to double back? Moon, Jenny Tarvers is the only honest to God, genuine franchise pleasure palace in 360 miles. Now, where would you go if you was a Fuster? Must think he's the only man on earth with a full set of brains. Besides that, Heartline owns him. Luke, are you all right? Yeah, I am, Jenny. I was afraid you were hurt. Thank you. This ought to cover the damages. A couple of bucks out of my hat. Sure. Got to attend to the needs of my mortal body. Janine and Renee, they came all the way from Elko. The ball of wings. It's okay, we'll take care of them. got business. <clears throat> Personal. Yes, I saw. No way. To all you young maidens, where you reside, beware of the cowboy who swings a rawhide. He'll court you and pet you. And up the trail go in the spring on this bucking bronc. <laughs> go. Hey, you know, you are too easy on them boys. How you feeling? Better than you do, boy. Better than you do. Oh, that's no lie. The fuses and those softies.
Luke, it's a sheriff. I just made myself to home. Hope you folks don't mind. Well? My wife's well brought up, sir, but I mind. I just had my vehicle tuned. That car runs like 60. Sheriff, what's this all about? I'm working today. So am I. Nate Rackley just decided to press charges. Assault with intent to commit bodily harm. That's Heartline's law. Your boss changes his mind and I'm arrested. You could always post bail. No, Sheriff, I don't think so. I don't think so. You want to cuff me? No, not necessary. Look, let me pay it. We'll get a lawyer. No, I'm just going to take this real easy. I'm just going to sponge off the taxpayers for a while. You ain't gonna like it in jail, Shasta. You've been getting fat for years, Sheriff. I just want to see how the other half lives. Get that lawyer. Don't pay him too much. stayed here till those cockroaches carried me out. You'd have gone crazy in another five minutes. We have a lawyer. This is Tom Sparkman. You and I are old friends. When she called, I caught the train from Spokane. From what she tells me, there are larger issues involved here. Did she uh, tell you that we don't have much money to pay you with? <laughs> I'm used to waiting for my fees. Or eating them. Well, in that case, we argue a long time. tell me, Mr. Strickland, this jury still cannot reach a verdict. This is a very simple case of assault with intent to the commit... The jury? Enough to convict. Don't see it that way, Your Honor. Mr. Strickland, defense counsel argued to move this trial to the county seat at considerable expense. I should lock you jurors in the Paradise Hotel until you agree on a verdict. You've done that already, Judge. Won't do you any good. This jury is well and truly hung. Uh, case dismissed. Your Honor, there's a matter of my client's bail. Remanded. Although I may order a new trial. See the clerk of court. Adjourned. Tom. Where's the Honorable Judge Lang? He's in enough hot water with the appellate division as it is. I used to have smart friends. Yes, who won? Jeez. Let me get some money. Thank you. Oh, no, you convinced me and a couple of others it was a put-up job. It's a good friend of his. <laughs> Thought I'd pay my respects, ma'am. Mr. Strickland, you stood out for me and I appreciate it. No, no, no. It's no crime to be poor, just lazy. And you aren't lazy. Mr. Shasta, you were the best teacher we ever had over here. Not any communist like the school board said. So, see ya. Ask you something before you leave town. Dad, I'll give you money back. Hey, good luck.
give you 20 years. We want more. these cattle. Raise them. God made these cattle. Maybe it was their destiny. What are you going to do? Peel them and eat them. Gonna stick. We're gonna stick. We're gonna stick! It's even worse than the day before. That's the way I figured. Again. Where's Broomfield? Uh, we're special deputies. That give you the right to rough up my wife? This is sort of a posse. What's the charge? The usual. Cattle stealing. You got a warrant? Sheriff says we don't have to have one. Sounds like I'm going to be shot trying to escape. Time up. Guns on the ground, boys. on the trail you take the chestnut i always liked your horses sorry it's not more how we had fun but now we gotta cast no shadows what will you do two men riding together sure to get caught i'll go to my people they'll make me hard to find so long Ma. we'll see each other sure Come on. Chug the buys are best. You go to Strickland's. It's war now, they'll shoot me on sight. You'll be safe there. Triple S is finished. There's gotta be another way. Jillian. I dreamed a small dream. A storekeeper's dream. It's over. I'll be back. 
I'll find justice on the other side of those mountains and I'll be back. And we'll start again. you for your long journey dear friend i know we never had much to share except the work cattle trail hungry camps going without supper many a time of course we rodeoed and got drunk and had fun till our money ran out loving jill made me ambitious moon i trusted hotline's rules but you understood our fight was never about money it was about being a man I'm sorry for what this cost you. Hear my farewell prayer, brother. I am better than my fate, for I have died with honor. Life is the dream from which death awakens me. Only the mountain endures forever. Worth a sign. You don't call this off, Major. 
we're about used up. When I have him, when I have Luke Shasta. What your people did to Mrs. Shasta and that Indian wasn't pretty. It's not gonna look good in court. You don't know this country, Captain. My judge says he's a murderer. It's not the Army's job, Major, to settle your personal feuds. It's your job, like it or not. I have Colonel Dalton's word on it. started messing around with her. They just wanted to scare her. It got out of hand. It was Towler's idea. He, he started it. Why don't you just leave me here? I'll get loose by and by, but you'll be long gone. I wasn't one that done the burning. Sure, I rode along with the posse when they come to arrest you. I had to. It's hard times. I hadn't had a decent job in 18 months. I was just following orders. You'd done the same. I got a little boy and a wife in Texas. They're waiting for me to, to send them some money. Just to listen, no! I didn't do it! Work yourself loose. <laughs> Where's my wife? I took her to the hospital after they... Who did it? Same men that burned you out, Heartlines. man named Towler commenced it. I hear. Now that the word's out, they're not showing their faces. Heartlines got them working the lion camps. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, I guess I would, too. I need a fresh mount. Uh, dark brown has the most bottom. He answers to the name of Ned. Hotline's <sighs> offering a big reward for you. So how long do you leave your life, Mr. Strickland? How? Thank you. Tyler, let a man sleep, can't you? 
What man? Miss Roosevelt's more likely to be up here than any stray cattle. For two fifty a month. Uh-uh. Where's Hartline? He's not here. He's still out after you. I'm just looking after things. Very careless. Uh-huh. Start it up. I, I'd done everything you asked. We're in the middle of nowhere. I said the boots, too. If this is rough country, I'm liable to get crippled if I don't freeze to death. Clear, Sheriff. Don't turn around. Put your rifle down, put your pistol down, and then stand up. I'm just a hard hand. This isn't my fight, Shasta. I swear I won't harm you or yours. You know how to fly? I'm sure about to try. Sleep. Uh, 
sure you want to get involved in this thing? Let's go to work. Okay, I'm up and at him. Let's lift off this top. You get it? Yes, sir. This will cover it. In your windshield? It's part of the service. You just stay right there, keep pumping, and don't move. Consider this a loan, Mr. Hodges. Yes. It's my collateral. Yes. Yes. Everything in your cash box. Open it up! Yes. All, right. All, right. All right. Anything you want. If you get out of this ride, I'm going to retire. Yeah, I believe you'll have to. Guess you know who you're robbing. That's right. You can tell Major Hardline this is a down payment on him. Are you kidding? Some warm clothes and fresh horses. Can you help us out? Certainly can. You take whatever you need. The horses are in the barn. Thank you. Hi, honey. Just help yourself. You bet. Come on up. for Moon. Moon is dead. You'll understand.
It's funny how this life turns out, you know? You start out wanting not too much. The minute you get a little bit, somebody else wants it, and they're willing to kill you for it. You afraid? You? Why don't you get some sleep? I'll keep watch for a while. Come to bed with me. The first time I saw you, I thought I'd never seen such a careful man. And then I heard you laugh. Go. I say the man's dead. If he ain't, why get your Cadillac, Major? Sheriff, I think you ought to go up there, see if he's taken care of. This is your show, Major. And I ain't no hero. You worthless. You'll be looking for a job five minutes after we hit town. All right! Hey. Elroy! Elroy, will you do this for me, Major? Sometimes a man has to clean out his own privy. Guess I'm quitting you. All right, Elroy. 
I'll do it. I'll do it myself. Shasta, I have something to tell you. We can settle our score face to face. I gave you a chance to be somebody. You turned on me. A dog wouldn't do that. You fight like an Indian. You're good at killing men from behind a rock. You eat the guts out of dead animals. Well, here. Here, let's, let's have it out. You want it on your feet like a man, or on your belly? How do you want to be remembered? Let's go home.